Should you be alarmed? One of astronomy's greatest mysteries is being furthered by bright brief radio bursts emanating from the neighborhood of a nearby galaxy. One of the last places astronomers anticipated finding the recurring energy bursts was in an old collection of stars known as a globular cluster. Radio transmissions have been reaching Earth for years from unknown origins. However, scientists have now located some of these origins and what they discovered startled them. Who is transmitting these radio waves? Are they communications coming from extraterrestrial life? Let's find out. Fast radio bursts or FRBs are extraordinarily brilliant, extremely brief radio wave bursts that frequently originate billions of light years away and have eluded explanations since they were discovered in 2007. Scientists made the assumption that the bursts are caused by youthful transient cosmic objects known as magnetars based on their observations to date. Yet a recent fast radio burst has been linked to a globular cluster 11.7 million light years away from the nearby spiral galaxy M81. This burst was discovered among an elderly star cluster, which is similar to discovering a smartphone inside Stonehenge, in that the observation makes no sense. Fast radio bursts are not likely to exist here in any case. So what exactly is happening? Cosmic anachronism is difficult to explain, according to scientists. They're also coming to the idea that there might be other ways to create a quick radio burst, just like there are many other celestial phenomena. Using the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, or CHIME telescope, which has proven to be a relentless FRB finding machine, researchers first discovered the burst, designated FRB 20201020E, in January 2020. Less than 30 rapid radio bursts were known to exist when CHIME went online in 2017, but the telescope has increased the number to well over a thousand. FRB 20201020E is a repeater, which is a space engine that emits repeated audible radio blasts rather than exploding once and disappearing, like at least two dozen other known bursts. Although its bursts don't shine as brightly as those originating from the furthest reaches of space, during the following three years, they helped researchers locate the FRB in the sky. The team could then try to locate a source from there. Astronomers knew they were looking for something close by, possibly even inside the Milky Way's gaseous, sparsely inhabited halo, because measurements of the bursts indicated that FRB 20201020E was quite nearby. The specific location of the burst was then determined by scientists using a network of radio telescopes called the European Very Long Baseline Interferometry Network. We conclusively prove that FRB 20201020E is associated with a globular cluster in the M81 galactic system, thereby confirming that it is 40 times closer than any other known extragalactic FRB, according to the researchers. Where things really start to become interesting is in how that is to be interpreted. Fitting into current models is really difficult. Some of the oldest things in the observable universe are globular clusters. They are billions of years old, possibly even considerably older than the galaxies they orbit. Before now, scientists had a strong suspicion that some of the youngest compact objects ever seen, magnetars, or extraordinarily magnetic flaring stellar corpses generated when young, massive stars explode and die, were responsible for quick radio bursts. When an ultramagnetic stellar corpse is created, it persists for tens of thousands of years before its magnetic field degrades and a regular neutron star is left behind. But as far as astronomers are aware, magnetar-producing stars are not present in these brilliant, closely packed globular clusters. This type of star formation is happening all around the universe, even in our own galaxy in many places, but not in globular clusters, says Northwestern University's Claire Yi, who studies globular clusters. It's like, wow, what is happening here? It has taken over 16 years to even start solving the rapid radio burst riddle. Early theories included alien technology, flaming dead stars, colliding massive objects and black holes that were evaporating. 
The radio burst's nanoscale architecture, millisecond duration, and strength provided more hints that they must be generated by incredibly dense compact objects. As a result, scientists started looking at phenomena like black holes and neutron stars, which are left over after huge stars explode into supernovae. Subsequent discoveries provided further evidence that some bursts are born in places with extremely high magnetic fields, raising the possibility that magnetars are the source of these puzzling signals. Then, three years ago, a Milky Way magnetar created a radio burst that looked like an FRB. Even though the explosion was a little weaker than the extraordinarily long burst coming from halfway across the universe, experts were confident they were on the correct track. After scientists observed the FRB-like bursts from the galactic magnetar, the hypothesis that FRBs are generated by magnetars has acquired a significant amount of life. Both the theorists and the observers were content with magnetars in this case. Yet, that was short-lived. Astronomers now need to determine how magnetars might form and persist in globular clusters in light of the discovery of FRB 20200120E, or they need to determine how a population of very old, calm stars can produce such strong explosions. Neither issue is simple to resolve. While magnetars are not thought to be present in globular clusters, other types of stellar remnants ought to be common. Early in the lives of these old clusters, white dwarfs, which are formed when sun-like stars balloon into red giants and die, and neutron stars, which are formed by greater supernovae, can be produced. It's possible that magnetars can form when two neutron stars crash and merge, when two white dwarfs collide and merge, or when an orbiting companion star of a white dwarf steals enough material for it to collapse into a newborn neutron star. Yet, nobody has observed a magnetar forming in this manner. Claire Yi believes that additional research is necessary to determine how magnetars can emerge in these clusters and how other stars might be able to generate fast radio bursts. She adds that it's also critical to learn more about this specific cluster in order to determine what else might be causing the enormous blasts. Even in the absence of magnetars, it should be able to produce an event that resembles a fast radio burst. Fast radio burst-like outbursts could be produced by two neutron stars whirling around one another, as well as by turbulent disks of matter whirling around black holes that occasionally produce jets and flares. Possibly, like gamma-ray bursts, which puzzled astronomers for decades after being first identified by a military satellite in the 1960s, rapid radio bursts are created by a variety of pathways. Today, we know that these extremely energetic flashes of gamma rays can be produced by both strong supernovae and colliding neutron stars. Since the first one was discovered in 2007, some 1,000 FRBs have been found but they are famously challenging to monitor because they vanish instantly and without a trace. Just 15 of these have been located in particular galaxies. Therefore, in order to identify the types of cosmic events that cause these powerful pulses, scientists are interested in monitoring their origin. Astronomers located five deep space signals using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. These intense explosions produce as much energy in a thousandth of a second as the Sun does in a year. Five of the eight most recent FRBs could be linked to their host galaxies, and the scientists were also able to determine what kinds of places they originated from. The spiral arms, where stars are formed, are a characteristic of all of these far-off galaxies. As a result of the variations in star distribution, some of the arm formations were more tightly wrapped than others. According to the images, it is unlikely that the FRBs originate from the most massive young stars in the galaxies. Scientists believe that neither the merger of neutron stars nor the cataclysmic deaths of these young stars are the likely causes of the flares. Also, they are not from dwarf galaxies, which researchers previously failed to rule out as a potential source. Astronomers are reducing the range of potential explanations for these enigmatic signals 
with each new finding. Even a slight suggestion of extraterrestrial life excites people, even as researchers continue to study the signal and specialists warn that there is almost definitely an ordinary, earthly explanation. Since Project Ozma was launched, scientists have been searching the skies for radio signals that might have an artificial source. These murmurs from extraterrestrials are believed to resemble the broadcasts humans use to communicate, as opposed to the radio waves the cosmos naturally creates. These transmissions would only operate inside a relatively small band of radio frequencies. As a further indicator that the radio source is emanating from a far-off cosmic object, such as a planet orbiting a star, they would also exhibit a distinctive drift that would indicate the source is travelling either toward or away from Earth. Signals like that seem to be produced only by human technology. It is incredibly difficult to distinguish between signals from space and those produced by human-made technologies because our Wi-Fi, cell towers, GPS and satellite radio all perfectly resemble the signals we're looking for. Astronomers have found a lot of possible signals over the years. Some of them turned out to originate from as yet undiscovered celestial sources like pulsars, fast rotating dead star carcasses that radiate radio waves into space. At first glance, the earliest known quick radio bursts appeared to be manufactured signals. Periton signals, which are less intense radio emission bursts, initially puzzled researchers until they discovered a microwave oven as their source. A satellite that has not yet been identified, a plane flying overhead, a transmitter on the ground close to the telescope's line of sight, or perhaps something even more banal, like faulty electronics in a nearby building or a moving car, could all be potential sources of BLC-1's anomalous transmission. There are some signals that astronomers haven't been able to conclusively attribute to a natural source, such as the well-known WOW signal detected by the Ohio State University Radio Observatory, also known as Big Ear, in 1977. It appeared at first that this intensely dazzling assault of radio waves was a genuine SETI discovery, but nobody has been able to confirm it or locate it again. Breakthrough Listen began a 10-year hunt in 2015 with funding from Silicon Valley mogul Yuri Milner, but the team hasn't yet discovered anything concrete in their scans of the skies. Breakthrough began pointing the Parkes telescope at Proxima Centauri in April 2019. This wasn't necessarily done to look for extraterrestrial life, but rather to learn more about the enormous flares that small red dwarf stars like Proxima frequently emit. Shane Smith, a student at Hillsdale College in Michigan working with Breakthrough, was analysing that very data when he noticed BLC-1 appearing to be emanating from the star. BLC-1 passed all of the tests the Breakthrough team performs to screen out the millions of signals produced by humans, despite the signal's obscurity. It had a small bandwidth, seemed to vary in frequency, and vanished when the telescope focused on something other than Proxima. Four such signals appeared during the next few days, though some have been ruled out as radio interference. Our algorithm has a lot of hope for what might be extraterrestrial technology. But this is really exciting since it's the first time the algorithm has actually discovered something noteworthy. According to Seth Shostak of the SETI Institute, if BLC-1 is, against all chances, a postcard from the star system next door, then statistically speaking, the Milky Way must be utterly crammed with communicative civilizations. Under this scenario, our galaxy would contain more than half a billion societies, which sounds like a lot. Since the discovery, the team has re-examined Proxima Centauri, but has not discovered anything. In addition to keeping the Parkes telescope pointed at Proxima, Researchers are devising new tests to identify the source of the signal. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.